Science has been one of the most influential forces in human history, but rarely is it the focus of science fiction movies. Many movies claim to be scientifically accurate, but even the best of those sometimes gets the science wrong. So let's go over some of the top movies that tout their scientific accuracies and see which things they got right and which things they got very, very wrong. Interstellar, to this day, is considered one of the most scientifically accurate movies to be released. Kip Thorne, famed theoretical physicist and Nobel Prize winner, advised director Chris Nolan throughout the entire movie to ensure that it maintained an extremely high level of scientific accuracy. The two most notable of which was the visual representation of a black hole and the concept of time dilation. Kip Thorne's exact equations of what a black hole would look like were used to generate gargantua. Everything from how the black hole would bend the light from the accretion disk behind it to appear like it's both below and above the black hole, to how the black hole would look spherical to us in three dimensions, everything was derived from Kip Thorne's equations. Everything, even down to how time would be affected on a planet that was closely orbiting a black hole. When Matthew McConaughey and crew set down on Miller's planet, time dilation was so extreme that every hour that was spent on the planet was seven years on Earth. And one of my favorite favorite little easter eggs for this is they added in a ticking sound into the score that went off every second. Each one of those ticks signified 12 hours on Earth. The vast majority of the movie is pretty scientifically accurate until you get to the part where Matthew McConaughey actually went into the black hole. The biggest scientific inaccuracy of the movie was the fact that he survived the trip at all. So far, we don't have a single piece of technology or know of any kind of material that could survive the trip into a black hole and pass the event horizon, let alone a human body surviving that trip. In reality, you would be torn apart piece by piece until you are a string of atoms floating down into the singularity of the black hole. But you know, it's a movie, so let's just assume that you could make it into a black hole. Would you wind up in fourth dimensional space? And what would that look like exactly? Well, it turns out how Interstellar showed a fourth dimensional space is pretty good. And of course, nobody knows what it would actually look like in a fourth dimensional space. But if you were to be in one, instead of being trapped in the present with the past and the future inaccessible to you, you'd be able to view time just as you'd be able to walk around a room in 3D space. Your birth wouldn't be in the past to you anymore. You would have always been born and always being born. Instead of your death being unknown to you and in the future, you would have always known how you died and always be dying. It would be equally an enlightening of an experience as it would be a terrifying one. However, where Interstellar really got the science wrong within the fourth dimension is that you wouldn't be able to interact with your past and future. This wouldn't be some sort of weird workaround to time travel. McConaughey wouldn't be able to push the books from behind the bookshelf. You wouldn't be able to interact with various points in your timeline. You'd only be able to observe it. The movie Gravity puts Sandra Bullock and George Clooney in orbit for an anxiety-inducing thrill ride just to fix the Hubble Space Telescope. At the time, it was touted as one of the more scientifically accurate movies to come out. There are so many things that it does get right, like its betrayal of zero gravity. No one has done that quite like they had. But scientists, NASA engineers, and astronauts have been eager to point out its inaccuracies since its release. So right off the bat, let's talk about the big one. Can debris from one satellite collision take out every satellite, the Hubble Space Telescope, and the ISS? Can small fragments cause total satellite destruction? Well, yeah, it can. There is an extremely delicate balance between every satellite that is currently orbiting our planet, and one satellite can take out 10 and then 100. And keep in mind, in order for things to be orbiting the planet, they have to go 17,500 miles per hour. So when that shrapnel is coming around, it's coming around with incredibly destructive power. Luckily, we've planned for all of this. This is why different types of satellites are placed at different orbits in low, medium, and high Earth orbit. So if an accident occurs, it won't take out every 
free satellite. Where Gravity specifically got the science wrong is that they had the communication satellites in the same orbit as the ISS and the Hubble. In reality, all of those things are in totally different orbits, with the satellites orbiting about 100 times higher than they are in the movie. And speaking of orbits, when Sandra Bullock tries to go from the Soyuz to the Tiangong station, she uses a fire extinguisher to propel herself across a huge, vast distance of space. While this method of travel could technically work, it's highly improbable that anybody could actually do it. And not only that, but she also had to change orbital heights in order to make it to the Tiangong station, which squarely brings the feet into the nearly impossible realm. Ultimately, by the end of it, you can't help but feel bad for Sandra Bullock's character, not just because of what she went through, but in the movie, she's a medical engineer, and there is absolutely no way that she ever would have been asked to work on the Hubble in the first place. All right, so don't come for me for this one, but let's talk about The Martian. This is easily, hands down, the most scientifically accurate movie to ever come out. Director Ridley Scott and screenplay writer Drew Goddard worked with Andy Weir, who wrote the original book, with the goal of being as scientifically accurate as possible. They took painstaking steps to ensure that every minute detail of Matt Damon's suit, how Matt Damon would have grown the potatoes on Mars, and even how a stranded astronaut on Mars could hack into the Mars rovers to communicate with Earth right down to the connection port on the rovers. All of that was perfectly accurate. However, like I mentioned, it's not perfect. The biggest scientific inaccuracy is, of course, right at the beginning of the movie. The violent dust storm that took the original crew out, lifting some of them up off of their feet, leaving Matt Damon's character stranded in the first place, absolutely would not have happened on Mars. The atmosphere on Mars is about 100 times less dense than Earth's atmosphere. So even if wind speeds of this dust storm were about 100 miles per hour, it would feel 100 times less intense than it would be on Earth. That violent dust storm would do about as much damage as a one mile an hour gust of wind. The atmosphere simply wouldn't be thick enough for larger pieces of rock and sand to be picked up and carried with the wind. The heavier pieces would just fall down to the ground and the only thing that would be blown in that 100 mile an hour dust storm on Mars Mars are grains of sand far smaller than grains of sugar. In reality, if that dust storm happened on Mars, no astronaut would be getting blown over, let alone lifted up off of their feet. And don't even get me started on the end of the movie where Matt Damon cuts a hole in his glove to propel himself through space. I mean, seriously, what is with space movies always feeling like they need to have a real life version of Wally flying around space with an extinguisher? But despite all of that, The Martian still goes down in history as the most scientifically accurate space movie to date, except for, you know, the whole beginning and end part of the movie. The last one is perhaps my favorite on the list, Arrival. While this movie does get a lot of science right, it's not particularly well known for being highly scientifically accurate. This is just a beautifully made sci-fi movie about humanity's first contact with an alien species and how they go about it in a highly imaginative way. The main problem they're trying to solve in this movie is how to communicate with aliens. Amy Adams' character is called in as she is the world's leading linguist to help decipher these inky alien symbols. The writer and director even took time to interview and consult real linguists to ask them how they would go about deciphering an alien language such as this. There were even accurate and working coding methods being used in the movie to translate those alien symbols, the exact coding that we would use if we were faced with this situation in real life. However, the biggest scientific inaccuracy of the movie is how they used Amy Adams' character itself. It's commonly assumed that linguists are masters of many languages. However, it's not particularly common for linguists to speak more than just a few languages if they speak more than one at all. Rather, their specialty lies in the study of linguistics, the structure of a language, its phonetics, syntax, and semantics. For example, a professor in linguist may study how electronic communications compares to traditional print when it comes to learning. They aren't necessarily studying the translation of languages themselves. And while a linguist would certainly be very helpful and a good part of the team gathered to decipher an alien language, they wouldn't necessarily be the sole expert used when it comes to communicating with alien species and translating its language. And 
while each of these, or any other sci-fi movie for that matter, may not be 100% accurate, their existence has been invaluable in shaping public opinion about space ventures and funding those missions. Movies like Contact, Blade Runner, 2001 Space Odyssey, and countless others inspire future generations to shape tomorrow. Science fiction and progress in technological advancements go hand in hand far more than you may realize. So despite those inaccuracies in these movies and stories being told, that has not made science any less influential on our culture.